Good morning everyone, it's Justine, and today I'm bringing you a card featuring the So Suzy Stamp of the Month for December. Now this is our last month of the Stamp of the Month program, and we're sad to say it go, but it is time to bid farewell. What's really exciting though is that all of the inspiration for the Stamp of the Month for December is available in one post, since the So Suzy site will be down from December 16th to the new year 2016 until 2017 so just to remodel and update things a little bit for you so we're offering you all of the inspiration in today's post and if you're interested in still signing up for the stamp of the month you'll get the entire program all at once which is really cool and it's still available in limited supplies so get your hands on that if you would like it so enough chit chat about that, I'm using a 24 pack of Kuretake watercolors and some Strathmore watercolor paper. And as you can see I started dropping in some blue color and I'm using three different shades here that come in the pack. And as you can see I'm trying to put on some heavy color at first and then I'm going in from side to side with my brush to kind of go from a light to a dark look. With my card, I want it to look like water, kind of being underwater, so it's kind of streaky looking, and I want to give it sort of that texture. Now, for each layer, it's really important that you dry the layers, and I like to pick up a lot of the color using paper towel because it creates a really fun texture on the background, and it makes it dry faster. So once it's dry in between, you can keep adding more and more color. It will react with the color but from below, but it is going to make things a little bit easier. So when I'm finished and it's all dry, it's going to look like this, which I'm quite happy with. It's got texture, it's not perfect, and I like that about it. So I'm grabbing one of the previous stamp of the month. This is the coral uh, that we had, um, I believe, in the third quarter, which, again, is available because you can get the whole year's worth of stamps at the moment, as I mentioned earlier in the video. And I'm going to be stamping this with some Versamark ink. Now, the Versamark ink, you could leave it just as I'm doing it right now. It's going to create this super cool watermark look, and it's just going to be slightly different color than the watercolor paper. So I just had to pick it up to see if you could see it because I couldn't see it in the lighting I was in at the moment. And I'm going to stamp it a third time here in the middle. And I'm turning it and switching it each and every way so that it just provides a little bit of variety on my card. Now at this point you have to remember my background is completely dry and then I stamped on it. So don't do that when your cardstock is still wet obviously. So I'm grabbing some Grape Fizz Perfect Pearls and I am just going in with my Perfect Pearls brush and if you go side to side really quickly it's just going to stick to the Versamark ink and not to the actual card base itself. You might get a bit of a shimmer on the card base but the image is definitely um, very clear. I'm going to add a couple of droplets of water so that the watercolor reacts and I add a little bit more texture to the card and a little bit more of those dots that you see in the left corner of the card. I think that it was a little too there weren't enough on the other side, it wasn't even. The water also will help set the perfect pearls. Now I'm going to go ahead and die cut this, this base that has become too large. So I'm going to put this through my die cutting machine and I'm going to cut two pieces out of it. I'm going to cut the full size rectangle to fit on an A2 card. And then I'm going to cut a smaller rectangle because I'm going to do some inlay die cutting. The second thing I have to do is I have to cut that smaller rectangle out of white cardstock as well. So once I had those two pieces cut out I was able to do a technique called inlaid die cutting. Now I could have simply cut out the background, cut out the rectangle and pasted it on top but I cut that rectangle out of my panel so that I could slip the white piece inside of it and have it still be one layer. It's just a little trick and it looks really cool. I'm going to be stamping the December stamp of the month now. Now this is the new one onto the white cardstock and it says, sometimes in the waves of change, we find our true direction. And then I'm going to just simply fold my card base over and attach everything all together. So I grab my Tombow Mono Liquid Adhesive and I use that for the card base itself. And I am just attaching that to my card base. It's a top folding card that measures five and a half by four and a quarter once it's all done. And then I'm able to slip that rectangle which has the stitched background or the stitching around the edges into the actual card and then the stitching is actually around the panel as well so I think it looks really fantastic when you have that stitching it just gives it an extra layer of finish. And then I'm, lastly I'm just going to add some sequins that I have on hand 
and I'm going to add those to my card as well. And I'm just going to speed you up through this process because as many of you know, my sequin putting on is extremely slow. So I'm just adding those three here. I'm not sure where they're from. I just happen to have a baggie of these and they're just a blue color that are really, really pretty. And that's my card tutorial for today. So I hope you enjoyed this really cool background, this shiny watercolor, and that you think about signing up for our Stamp of the Month to get yourself a really great collection of stamps. Thanks so much for watching.